Hello, hello, you magnificent beast, you, and welcome to another smoking hot episode of Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech news show proven to cause irreversible psychological damage to house pets and prompt an uncontrollable evacuation of the audience's bowels. So you might want to grab a spare pair of Y fronts before you get too cosy, or maybe just sit on a bucket. And now that we've scared off anyone who unwittingly clicked on this video expecting an actual legitimate proper news program, let's crack on. Techspert Weekly. So the biggest tech shenanigans of the week was Qualcomm's massive Snapdragon Summit, which of course normally takes place in Hawaii. And Qualcomm sure enjoyed reminding us of that fact as we logged in from our spare rooms with a view of the piss and rain outside. Thanks guys. Anyway, the highlight of the show was that 5mm Snapdragon 888, the most premium Dragon platform yet and the successor to the existing Snapdragon 865 and 865 Plus. The 888 actually has built-in 5G connectivity unlike last year's 865 thanks to the on-chip X60 modem, so hopefully that means phone manufacturers will save a little bit of space as well as potentially a bit of cost. Other highlights include Qualcomm's fresh 6th generation AI engine, which is now capable of three times the AI processor using the same power as the 865. That Spectra 580 ISP offers triple processing smarts, so basically smartphones will be able to simultaneously capture three different 4K HDR video streams using three different camera lenses. And when you burst shot with your smartphone's camera, you'll be able to grab up to 120 12 megapixel photos in just one second. The new Adreno 660 GPU boasts 35% faster graphics rendering and is apparently 20% more power efficient versus the previous gen with support for super fast touch response rates as well. So basically you've got no excuse when those 12 year old tosspots use their stupid youthful reactions to cap your ass from 50 paces. Arrgh, it's not me that shit, it's the bloody phone! The Snapdragon 888 also packs dual Bluetooth 5.2 antennas, which according to Qualcomm serves up pretty much a wired headphone experience. And you'll also apparently have the ability to run two separate OSs on the same device, for instance for two different profiles, you might have your home profile and your work profile. All seriously sexy stuff, and we shouldn't have long to wait either because apparently the first Snapdragon 888 enabled smartphones should be hitting stores in early 2021, starting with Xiaomi's Mi 11 flagship. And here's all the manufacturers who've already confirmed they will be launching 888 flagships in 2021. All the usual candidates basically, although no Samsung or Sony just yet. Which is particularly surprising on the Samsung front because the Galaxy S21 flagship is supposed to be launching in January, which is of course next month. So here's hoping they're just holding their cards close to their chest and they're not going to just launch it with Exynos only. Please God Samsung, don't launch it with Exynos only. Somewhat more surprising was the press release that followed from Motorola, which said that they would be launching a Snapdragon 888 smartphone as well. Not surprising in itself, but it said that it would be a Moto G branded handset that came with that 888 chipset. And of course, the Moto Gs are known for being the budget value end of the market. So either someone at Motorola has been drinking way too much happy juice, or we're going to see a Poco F1 style effort from Motorola in 2021 to take on the flagships at a budget price. God only knows, but 2021 is already shaping up to be a cracker, especially if I can just go to the pub again. Frankly, that would be a massive improvement. Anyway, I know that you'll all be panting like a pack of horny dogs after all of that chipset chat. So now it's time for the part of the show that's a sinister all-time disaster from which no one emerges unscathed. Oh no wait, hang on. No, actually that's just the Telegraph review of that god-awful Cats movie, uh, but just as applicable here. Viewer comments. <laughs> so first up, Vince uh, says, fellow Mackham here and Parkinson gone woo-hoo. Yes, actually that was the real news of the week. Screw all the Snapdragon Summit, all that other tech stuff. Sunderland has finally sacked its useless lump of a manager. We might all be riding the Gus bus back to victory. Who even knows what's going to happen? It's very exciting times though. Very exciting times for me and for Vince and for probably bugger all other people who are actually watching this show. But then that's Textbook Weekly basically in a nutshell. Obscure references and random stuff that 99% of the audience hasn't heard of and couldn't give a stuff about. Next up Inside33 says, how can you talk about these same phones for so long without going insane? I mean, who says I'm not insane? Look at these eyes. Are these the eyes of a sane person? Uh, next up, Jim says, Hi Chris, how do you get all of these phones set up with your apps so quickly? Yeah, I'm generally setting up a couple of phones a week at least at the moment. Uh, the answer is Google Cloud Backups for the win, my friend. You can get all of your old stuff copied over from your last phone to your new phone in less time than it takes me to f*** up an omelette or any predominantly egg-based dishes. Uh, next up, Girl on Fire says, I want a Textbert Mills and Boone audiobook. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> 
<laughs> do I do it with uh, the, the sexy uncle voice? Gisabella noticed the fresh young stud strut his way into the bar from the corner of her eye. He looked like he was made of pure muscle and prime beef at that, like he could strangle a polar bear using just his ass cheeks. Or maybe I'd just read it how I actually felt, probably bored as shit and occasionally a bit nauseous. In fact, I'll tell you what, if I was going to read any of these sort of romance audiobooks, I wouldn't want to do Mills and Boone stuff. What I'd want to do is those cheap 50 shades of grey knockoffs that you find on Amazon, like 12 a penny sort of thing. You all know what I'm talking about, don't you? You all know what I'm talking about. Let me just find some of these gems. What do I search for? Hot romance books. Yeah. I mean, okay, this one here looks like a classic. No accountant for desire, a lesbian medical romance story. I mean, that's pretty niche, right? I want a really hot lesbian love story, but it's got to involve someone being really sick as well. And it's book two in a series, no less. Clearly book one was <laughs> super popular. I mean, holy shit, there are so many of these sex pamphlets <laughs> set in hospitals. I can't think of a less sexy locale apart from possibly a graveyard. But then I'm guessing it's uh, like a Grey's Anatomy style super sexy Hollywood hospital where everyone is hot as shit. Not an actual real life hospital where there's a constant soundtrack of basically people hacking up phlegm and of course that delightful aroma of still piss. Whoa. Okay, so here's where I'm going to start to show what an ignorant sex prude I really am. This next one on the list, claimed by daddy, an age play DDLG ABDL Insta Love Romance. I mean, what does any of that mean? That might as well be written in Swahili. I mean, the guy on the cover, Jesus Christ, it looks like he could crack a walnut using just his pecs, basically. I mean, ABDL, is that like an alternative to ADSL? Is this some kind of like weird modem porno? It's only 58 pages, so I'm kind of tempted just to uh, just to grab it and have a, have a quick flick, but then I, I fear that my fragile little mind might shatter into a million pieces. Anyway, Christ, I've just realised that, of course, now my Amazon search history is going to be completely tainted forever. I'm going to come on here looking for stationery or something next week, and it's going to be recommending me anal beads and stethoscopes. Uh, right, next up, Flamin' Hedgehog says, uh, I bought the X3 on a whim and it's proven to be excellent, never buying a flagship ripoff ever again. Yeah, I'm assuming you mean the Poco X three fantastic smartphone i was all set to like declare it my favorite budget smartphone of the year and then of course xiaomi came along with the mi 10t Lite, which you know it, it adds a couple of extra bits like 5g support uh, for pretty much the same price but that's not to take anything away from the poco xe so still a fantastic smartphone and i'm sure that like next week something else will come along that will knock the mi 10t Lite off that perch ruddy crazy how cheap these things are now absolutely mental uh, next up lucas says uh, the three minute 40 second mark something uncensored slipped through all on last week's show. Ruh -roh. Did I forget to sense one of my naughty swear slips? That's what happens when Uncle Spurt edits videos after a six pack of Stella kiddies. Right in the cock it, viewer. Oh, it's all right, it was just cock. Yeah, personally, I don't count cock or piss or twat or flaps or any of that good stuff as naughty language. Otherwise, let's face it, I'd be hitting the bleep button about 12 dozen times every single freaking episode. There'd be no point in even actually doing these shows. It would just be a non-stop bleep. Next up, Tam says, any ETA of the Mortal G9 Power Unboxing slash review? Yes, Tam, the good news, my friend, is that Mortal has confirmed their review samples are coming in early next week, they said. So I should be hopefully getting you a lovely big fat Mortal G9 bit of action on the go around sort of Tuesday or Wednesday time. You wanted more Motorola motherfuckers? Well, you got it, baby. Uh, next comment, Stephen Major says, my laptop went frack this and turn itself off while watching this very episode. You see, machines are turning sentient, man. I warned you about this. Seriously, mark my words, this time next year we'll all be living in underground caves, sharpening sticks to defend ourselves against the rampant robot death squads. That's particularly bad news for me if even Steven's bloody laptop doesn't like me. Maybe I'll do a preemptive strike and just bugger off into the basement right now. Uh, next up, GJ Abraham says, does anybody remember when the opening credits to Heartbeat was the death knell for the weekend? Techspert is now like the opening salvo for the weekend. Mate, I remember that all too well. My parents were a massive fan of that bloody show. So yeah, Sunday evening, uh, as soon as you heard that bloody theme tune, heartbeat, why does my heart skip when you come wandering past? What the f*** were the words again? Anyway, yes, as soon as you saw bloody green grass gunning up a storm with that f***ing rug of a dog thing he used to carry about the place, you knew, oh, bollocks, it's time to smash out my homework and make my cheese sarnies for tomorrow. 
greatest part of the week by far. Uh, next up, uh, Violet Sky Diver says, do you think that rollable or foldable will be a more popular form factor and which would you personally choose? Uh, Sophia Smartphones, if this carries on from last week, if you missed it, Oppo revealed a snazzy concept phone where basically it looks like your standard smartphone, but then when you yank on one side of it, it gets bigger. And that sounds all kinds of wrong. When you yank on it, it gets bigger. Ooh, uh, the Oppo Penis phone coming 2021. But certainly if the reality is as good as those concepts, then I reckon that would be my favorite because then you could get smartphones actually this sort of size rather than let's face it the foldable phones are proper chunky when they are folded up. Uh, next up Delroy says Uncle Spurt should make his All I Want for Christmas remix. He'd go double platinum for sure and it'd probably pay for his hair stems. I mean Christ you'd bloody hope so right? if it went double platinum I'd probably be able to get them done in Barbados. I mean to be fair all that I want for Christmas is to get so unbelievably faced in a pub that I can't find my way home again so it's probably not quite the same sort of sentiment as the Mariah Carey original although probably a bit more honest. Uh, next up a Shinro Gaben sorry if I mold the pronunciation says if I didn't know better I'd think you were some mafia boss because you sure look like one. I mean what you're basically saying there is that I look like Joe Pesci right short bold and grouchy as f uh, next up, war mate Jedi Polar Bear says, As a northerner from Manchester, I smell of pie and bomb cakes. Ah, good old bomb cakes. Can't beat a bit of bap action. Ah, good old Manchester. I've only ever actually been there once. I need to get back there again. Uh, first time I went was, of course, naturally a stag do. I seem to recall I left most of my innards scattered across the various pavements in between some club playing god-awful Eurotrans all night and the local travel lodge. And a few more uh, requests for other stuff to review as well. Uh, Gareth, for instance, says, any news on when the Xiaomi Mi Watch is due to arrive? No sign of that. Absolutely bugger all uh, word from Xiaomi on that one. There's no sign of it on the Xiaomi UK website, so Christ knows what's happened to that. Uh, but the good news is that the launches are pretty much dried up now, so I'll be able to crack on with the backlog, get that G9 power smashed out next week and everything as well. Uh, next up, Alan Piddington says, Uncle Spurt, can you help a wee Spurtlin? Indeed, sir. Uh, do I get the Mi 10T Pro or the Mate 40 Pro? I don't give a toss about the Google CAC. It's all about the night photography. I mean, if, if the camera is the primary focus for you, then the Mi 10T Pro is a good, it's a good, smartphone camera but the Huawei phones in general are just next level man they are some crazy voodoo shit when it comes to that night photography they can basically see in the dark it's slightly terrifying right okay final comment of the week definitely because once again I've banged on for far too long uh, toothpaste tool says could you recap some other years like 2017 and 1999 I mean 1999 definitely not because that was the year I got my fake ID so I basically spent the entire time just smashing back 99p double vodkas and bottles of red pig down the keys side. I mean like World War 3 could have literally happened that year and I wouldn't have even bloody noticed. Beelzebub himself could have smashed his way up through the ground and crushed all of the world's leaders with his mighty gonads and declared himself the lord of humanity and I'd have slept through the whole goddamn charade with probably dried vomit still encrusted all over my cheeks. But no that's probably all actually gonna happen in 2021 if you know Trump decides to basically barricade himself in the White House and bash the nuclear launch button to bits. you dead zone all over again. Fun times. Uh, but yeah, but that's this week's show, everyone. Um, next week, I've actually got f all in the diary. Not a single launch or anything that I'm aware of at the very least. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some shenanigans going on. Of course, G9 Power coming in. Don't miss it. Got plenty of other sexy stuff coming up, of course. Full Mi 10T review. I'll be uh, smashing on with the Poco M3 shenanigans as well, so stay tuned for more on that. And a big thank you to everyone who left comments uh, down beneath the video last week. Apologies if I didn't get to yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please do leave your comments, questions, theories, etc. down below and we'll try and smash through as many of those next week as possible. Please do plug subscribe ding that notifications bell and best of all have yourselves a lovely weekend cheers everyone love you